Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest is someone who has a very vested interest in what happens in 2024 at the ballot box. And it's not just because her last name is Trump. It's because she's a mom raising kids in a world that is increasingly more confused and always on the edge of something terrible happening. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Laura Trump. I appreciate it. It's good to have you with us. Um, we are in the midst of the um, campaign cycle now. Iowa was, was just this last Monday, and, of course, New Hampshire is is just straight ahead of us. Um, you guys have been at this for the last four years. You've watched what's happened with uh, Joe Biden and, the, and not the moderate centrist Democrats that he claimed he was going to be, but the far-left extremist progressives that he's catered to these four years. Not as a Trump, not as someone who is in the public eye, not as someone who played with the idea of running for Senate or any of that. Just as just as mom, Laura Trump, what is your concern about 2024? Well, this is the make or break year, honestly. And, and I don't say that in a hyperbolic way, Kevin. I really believe that if we don't get this right, this election, November 5th of this year, because we're in it, we're in campaign mode, as you said, Iowa, New Hampshire. And then after that, it's just, I mean, all the way to November 5th, it's going to get crazy. Um, I don't know that we have the same country on the other side of it. I mean, heck, you look around over the past three years, and it truly feels like our country has changed so drastically that I think a lot of us really look around and we don't even recognize this as the United States of America in a lot of respects. And as you alluded to, I am a mom. I'm a mom of two kids. I have a son who's six and a daughter who's four. My kids are in kindergarten and pre-K, so they're very young. Mm -hmm. But I am incredibly concerned as I look around out there about the manipulation of an entire generation of kids, the way that our kids are, first of all, being taught to hate this country instead of loving this country, being taught that this is a racist, bad country as a whole, and being taught that you could wake up tomorrow and heck, if you decide you're another gender, that's no problem. There's hormone blockers you can take and oh, here's some surgeries that will also you know, change your body in ways you can never turn back from. And it is incredibly frightening to see what they are doing to our children. It's why I encourage every parent out there, get involved, pay attention, know for whom you are voting and know what these people stand for. If their values do not align with yours, then do not vote for them. Get involved yourself, run for school board. Um, but I really do believe that if the Democrats maintain control of the White House, and I got to tell you, Kevin, I don't think it'll be Joe Biden. God bless him. I don't believe he will make it to November 5th as the candidate on the Democrat side. But whoever it is they run, this country will cease to exist as the United States that we have always known and loved. We have to do this right in 2024. I think one of the more optimum scenarios for the Democrats is to run Joe, but to put whoever they really think they want to have in, in office as his VP. And then yep. that person doesn't have to be voted for mm -hmm. because he just resigns and then they just assume the office. Um, we're speaking with Laura Trump uh, and Laura, I cannot, we are very, very, just a few days away from the closing arguments from your father-in-law's appearance in the civil case with Letitia James in New York state where I broadcast from. Um, I've never seen a more collective case of Keystone cops and clowns than what Judge Ergonon and uh, Letitia James brought to that courtroom. But it wasn't just because it was a waste of taxpayer time and money that I'm offended by it. They dragged your husband, they dragged Don Jr., they dragged Ivanka into the courtroom. They had them answer questions. And then in this in this world of freedom that we consider, you know, um, important because of a thing called due process, they tried to ban your father, 45, from being, your father-in-law, 45, from being allowed to have a closing statement on his own behalf. Now, he kind of defied the order and went through with it, and I'm glad that he did all of that. But what does that tell you about what is supposed to be the most objective justice system on planet Earth? 
I mean, it is, it, it's a very fragile thing, you know, freedom and what we call the United States of America. And the truth is, you can't look around and see especially what they have done to my father-in-law in many different places, New York, of course, being one of them, and not believe that the the uh, justice system has been weaponized against political opponents because that's exactly, Kevin, what this is. There was no damage in this case. There was no injured party in this case. Not a single bank complained about anything. They got all their money back and well, some. Little secret here. All the banks testified on your father-in-law's behalf. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They were. They did their own due diligence. They were, are not going to take somebody's word for anything. They have their own process. So you're telling by. me Mar-a-Lago is actually worth more than $17 million? So I, It's shocking. I know. A, a huge property like that. It's, it's embarrassing that these people think Americans are that stupid. Clearly, this is election interference. Clearly, they have violated uh, really just the sanctity of who we are as Americans and what we are supposed to stand for in this country with this insane lawsuit. It is crazy to see Letitia James, who is a politician. Let's call her what she is. Correct. She is not an attorney general. Who campaigned is, off your father-in-law. Right. This is not an unbiased individual. This is a person whose sole mission, and she told you every campaign stump speech she had, was to take down Donald Trump, to take down the Trump organization, to go after him, to make his life a living hell. And here we are, and we are seeing it come to fruition. It is a very scary thing to see this happen in the United States of America. And if for no other reason than that, then to rectify the wrongs that have been done and to maintain some semblance of trust in our judicial system, yeah. I hope the people of this country see what's going on, and I hope they wholeheartedly go out and vote for Donald Trump as the 47th president. It'll be interesting to see where that all goes, because I do think that regardless of the outcome in New York, should it be negative, I think that uh, on appeal, it gets <laughs> jackknifed in the right. other direction. And, and we can only hope for that to be the case. We're speaking with Laura Trump, who is um, very much on board with uh, keeping America in the sights of American politicians. America first is not a theory, it's an actual principle, and that's what we're talking about here. Laura, let me ask you this, and this is not in any means a criticism of your husband, not at all, but in the 2020 cycle, this was about maybe two weeks before the general election, he was on the show, and since I've been doing this a really long time and I'm a really old dude, <laughs> um, I asked him, remembering in the back of my mind the George W. Bush, Al Gore hijinks and what was going on there, Mm -hmm. And I felt all through that election cycle that there were people planning on doing destructive things, especially on election night, especially if it was close. And I didn't want it to be close and I wanted it to be something. But we didn't we didn't have any idea what COVID had really done to the election process. We found out afterwards and we've seen it in the aftermath, how they changed the rules and so forth. She is Laura Trump. Uh, she's got a podcast. Uh, in fact, she's a new member of the Salem Media Group, and we're very excited to have her here as part of that uh, family as well. We'll come right back from New York. Don't go away. Ready or not, we'll be right back. <laughs> 